they've been killed on the street. They've been killed in front of their parents and they've been killed in front of their children. They have been shot to death. They have been stomped to death. They have been suffocated to death. They have been manhandled to death. They have been tasered to death. They've been killed when they've called for help. They've been killed when they were alone and they've been killed when they were with others. They have been killed shopping while black, driving while black, having a mental disability while black, having a domestic disturbance while black. They've even been killed being homeless while black. They've been killed talking on the cell phone, laughing with friends, sitting in a car reported as stolen, and making a U-turn in front of the White House with an infant strapped in the back seat of the car. Why don't we know these stories? Why is it that their lost lives don't generate the same amount of media attention and communal outcry as the lost lives of their fallen brothers? Hello, Moonlight. Hello, Darkness. Hello, Obsidian. Are you there? I can't quite see you. Hello, Sunlight. Hello, Honey. Hello, my mahogany baby. Are you there? Why won't you let me see you? Let me see you, please. They say I am many things because I'm a black girl. You're so pretty, but for a black girl. Skin, just the right shade. Light enough, white enough. Yeah, that Negro mixed with Creole, just enough whiteness into your bloodline to make your kitchen hair curl. Pretty black girl. Society is praising a past crime, a forced whiteness, a swirl that might be acceptable to master. House and field may have separated us, but when he blew out his candle, finished disrespecting our ancestry, stripping us of our precious jewels, and done caressing our figures, to him we were just some more used up niggas. They say, I'm calm and quiet for a black girl as if we aren't all individuals. They want me to be the strong, independent black woman, the kind that don't need no man, the kind that rolls her neck, snaps her fingers, and claps her hands. The strong black woman, a matriarch who carries her family and past on her back, fights oppression when it smacks her in the face, has her femininity stripped from her soul as she is forced to take on both gender roles. It is expected to be powerful. It is expected to be resilient. It is expected to take it. But it's okay to be vulnerable too. My gay friend said he has a black woman inside of him. You know, the sassy kind that I just mentioned. And it's funny because I'm a black woman with a black mind and I'm still trying to grasp how to handle it. But it makes sense. We're invincible. In fact, there are over 64,000 missing black women in America right now. Our faces aren't seen unless or like Beyonce, or Maya, or Taraji, or Viola, or Octavia, or Michelle. But even these women can't be authentically themselves. America screams, you're too black, your hair is nappy, you ain't got no 3-6 curls, you're too aggressive, you're too sensitive, and you're ugly. But despite our invisibility, there will be a day that a black girl comes to see herself. So, until then, let her be joyful. Let her sing. Let her dance into exhaustion, into pain. Let her entertain because that seems to be the only way America will pay attention. Let her laugh. Let her speak her way, boisterously, bold, soft, smoothly. And let her cry. 
Let her cry until her tears form into the Nile, leaving liquid to moisturize her roots. Let her cry like a child into oblivion. Let her cry until it baptizes her brokenness into beauty. Let her cry until her eyes swell and grow puffy, plump like a grapefruit. Please let her do these things so she can see herself. And finally, at last, she can be herself.